Radial head and neck fractures in children. Here is an elbow diagram and you can see the radial head. Fractures of the radial head and neck in children are not common. The fracture can be non-displaced, displaced, tilted, or translocated. These types of fractures are rare. They usually occur around 9 years of age, usually due to valgus force. The fracture may involve the physis, the growth plate. It is a salt two fracture, or the fracture may involve the radial neck at the metaphysis. There is mnemonic statement that can be used to remember the names and the order of the elbow ossification center called cry toe. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. These are the approximate ages when the ossification centers appear around the elbow. The C is the capitellum. It appears around one year. The R is the radial head. It appears around three years. The internal epicondyle, which is the medial epicondyle, five years. The trochlear, seven years. The olecranon, nine years. And the external epicondyle, which is the lateral epicondyle, will be 11 years. An AP and lateral view of the elbow, including the forearm, should be taken. Here there is a CT scan image of radial neck fracture. In this picture, you can see a 3D reconstruction of a fracture of the radial neck. The radial head should align with the capitellum in all views. Radial head capitular view may be helpful to view the radial head. The radio capitular view, it's an oblique lateral view, and the elbow will be flexed to 90 degree, and the thumb will be pointing upwards, and the beam is directed 45 degree proximally. Non-displaced fractures of the radial head may not be seen on an x-ray. And then you're going to look for the fat pad sign. If you find a posterior fat pad, that's not normal. That means there is a fracture. In the radian neck fractures, part of it is extra articular. So if there is a fracture there, the fat pad sign may not be present even if there is a fracture. Treatment. Non-displaced fracture. Immobilization. Immobilization is used if the angulation is less than 30 degree, because up to 30 degree of angulation is acceptable. Closed reduction is used if the angulation is greater than 30 degrees. How do you do closed reduction? Reduction of the radial neck is done with elastic bandage around the forearm and the elbow, or with extension of the elbow, traction, supination, and direct varus pressure over the radial head. Push the radial head medially and push the radial shaft laterally. Immobilization of reduction is acceptable. After reduction, the radial head usually stays in its Position by the periosteum. K wire joystick may be used for reduction in some cases. You will attempt close reduction first before you use K wire percutaneous reduction. Use the K wire percutaneous reduction if the close reduction failed.
Open reduction can be done if more than 45 degrees of residual angulation after failure of reduction, closed or by percutaneous methods. This is an example of pin fixation of a radian neck fracture. Complications Synestosis Fusion of the radius to the ulna. The reflected periosteum is a possible cause for the synestosis. Another complication is loss of motion. Another complication is osteonecrosis of the radial head that occurs due to interruption of the blood supply. Another complication is nonunion, which is rare. Interposition of the periosteum is a possible cause of nonunion. The risks and complications increase with open reduction. Open reduction should be the last resort in radial head and neck fractures in children. The worst outcome is seen in children older than 10 years. With fracture of the radial head in children, repeat neurovascular examination should be done. Compartment syndrome of the forearm should be suspected in case of increased analgesic requirement. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.